Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Tonight, a special extended report on the most important ghost investigation ever conducted on sightings. For the first time ever, hard evidence has been found that could prove the existence of communication with spirits. This historic case began with a call to our sightings hotline. A viewer contacted us to say that he had captured ghostly communication on Polaroid instant film. These are the pictures that have astonished researchers and left photographic experts baffled. They contain messages and images that seem to indicate communication with spirits. At first, the photographs frightened me. You snap one of these things and when you start asking questions, it starts answering. I don't know how to explain how bizarre that feels. Never ever have I come across anything like this at all before. From their hillside home in Los Angeles, John Huckard and John Matkowski called us about their photographs. It all started less than a year ago, when both men began to sense a strange presence. Now we stand there, reading something at the desk or something, and I'll feel a hand come up and place it on my shoulder. And of course I turn around to see who it is, and, it, and there's nobody there, and, and then I get a, you know, sort of a jolt of adrenaline or whatever. It makes me kind of nervous. Another thing I've seen in the last year is I've just seen this sort of free-floating shadow moving across the floor, or the desk, or the wall, or whatever. And when I see it, at first I, you know, I think it's well, I'm not actually sure what it is, but it's just, it's moving very slow. And then when I try to mask out all the possibilities for what could be causing it, there's nothing causing it. The other thing that, that I've seen, that apparently I'm the only one who's seen this, is uh, I've seen this old man um, standing over near the couch. I see him out of the corner of my eye, and it's just there for a hardly tangible instant. It's just there, and then when you look and blink, it's not there anymore. I felt things like, um, sort of like a sunburn on my arms. It's the only way I can explain it. It was sort of like um, a tingly, like a sunburn. That's the only thing I can think of, and that's how I usually know if there's some kind of presence here or something. In an effort to document the shadowy presence, the two men started taking pictures, unsure if anything so intangible could be captured on film. I took the picture of the bathroom door over by the bathroom and got this really strange looking thing that was either scary or comical. The first images they captured had distinct eyes, mouth and body. But then the pictures took an unexpected turn, and the results shocked everyone. They started receiving answers to specific questions. We asked him what his name was, just assuming that it's a presence. And we asked him his name, and he answered on the Polaroid. <laughs> he told us his name was Wright. And we were like, uh-huh, we still didn't believe it. So we just continued asking questions to the middle of the air in the living room, just to nothing. And we'd ask him if he was a good ghost or a bad ghost, you know, just really name questions to begin with. And the, he answered, friend. Who or what was causing this communication? When contacted, Polaroid was at a loss to explain the phenomenon. So far, more than 100 photos have been taken. Early writing was in English, but more recent writing has been in Latin. We have asked him if he, if he died in his house and his answer was in Latin, he answered that um, among other things, he did die in his house. Once John Matkowski contacted us, we assembled a sightings investigative team to be led by Carrie Gaynor, noted UCLA parapsychologist who has investigated more than 800 haunting cases in his 20 years of field work. Carrie Gaynor's famous photographic work in the notorious Entity case uniquely qualified him for this assignment. In my line of work, we spend a great deal of time waiting and watching and wondering and hoping. We don't experience phenomena very often. Uh, the people that live in the home are there all the time, and as a researcher, I just come in and leave. But when something happens, it's so exciting, it's so exhilarating, it's, it's a moment of uh, connectedness with something that's just mysterious, exciting, unknown. Kerry Gaynor began his survey using a magnetometer, 
to measure the physical environment. The reason we're using a magnetometer is just to see if there are any changes in the environment, basically with the onset of the phenomena. So that's the intriguing thing, is to walk the house and get a reading on it, and then if something happens, to have the magnetometer out and see if there's any change in the reading during the phenomena itself. Since the ghostwriting first appeared, Several of John's friends have also been able to capture messages on film. We asked them to participate in our investigation. Researchers carefully documented every step of the process. To minimize the possibility of a hoax, four cameras were on site. Sealed film, direct from Polaroid, was checked, rechecked, and logged. Marty Elkin was the first to get an answer. Are most spirits good spirits or bad spirits? Yeah, 30 seconds later, this astonishing message appeared. There are numerous remedial lemurs. Do we have a Latin dictionary? Lemurs. Uh, in Roman mythology, the night walking spirits of the dead. Hello. <laughs> the nervous laughter masked the tension and excitement in the room. Since the supposed spirit seemed to want to communicate with Marty, she asked another question. Right, will you be with them for a long time? And as the film developed, Another answer appeared in Latin. Marty, what are you thinking right now? How strange this is. <laughs> Translated, the message reads, all this is over now. Edson Williams, a special effects expert from the Brooks Institute of Photography in Santa Barbara, California, was on site to examine the photographs immediately. Uh, these were shots that were taken today. Uh, a few minutes ago, they were shot and came out of the Polaroid. I actually watched them eject out of the Polaroid. And now I'm in the process of evaluating, trying to decide if they're actually uh, authentic or if they've been uh, manipulated. There was a moment there where I, you know, I thought, oh my God, there's, and I was in the Polaroid, which made it even spookier. I'm in the background of the Polaroid. So I have a, a picture of me with ghost writing across it. And I really kind of, it made me feel that there could be something in the house. Many control photographs were taken with no results. And then suddenly, another message. Add letter on. Rick, what did you ask? I asked, what did he think of this in comparison to when he was alive? What do you think of the technology and what's going on? No, it's not in his dictionary. Ah, ad literum. Okay, to the letter, exactly. You have to establish a chain of evidence. You have to be able to observe the phenomena from the beginning to the end. So we have to, we have to load the film. We have to show that it's a sealed pack. We have to show that it's, that it's our camera. We have to fire it. We have to control the film as it comes out. We have to establish a chain of evidence. And once we do that, I'll feel much more comfortable. Investigator. And the instant photographs in this case might be just the kind of proof investigators have been searching for since the earliest days of photography. Early camera technology was crude and hoaxes were commonplace. But with the publication of the famous Lincoln photograph, spirit photography began to be taken seriously. Significantly, virtually every example of ghosts on film has been exposed as fraudulent. Only now has sightings been able to document what appears to be ghostly images on film in real time with witnesses present. Here you will see without editing the ghost writing phenomenon on film. First, a fresh sealed package of factory direct film is loaded into John's camera. This camera has been examined by photographic experts who found no obvious evidence of tampering. In this continuous action sequence, John Huckert poses a specific question. A picture is taken, and an answer to the question appears on film while the sightings cameras roll. Is he here because, because of you guys, or is he here because his home is... His yeah, yeah, right. Are you here because of us, or are you here because of the house itself? <laughs> <laughs> 45 seconds later, writing appears on the photograph. What does it say? Genius Loca. Oh, Graham. Who asked the question? John asked. John asked it, and the other John took it. The question for this picture was uh, Are you here for. John or the house? And the answer came out in Latin. We looked it up, and the answer is fairly intriguing. The exact translation is the guardian spirit of a man or place. 
Without any obvious signs of tampering, the sightings team had to ask, could this actually be a guardian spirit communicating from the grave? Or a hoax not yet solved? The camera and the exposed film were immediately sent to the Brooks Institute of Photography. Edson Williams, who had been on site during the investigation, developed one possible explanation. I scanned in the Polaroid at a high resolution using a digital scanner. When I scanned it in, I zoomed in on the image and noticed there would be individual hair fragments in the text. I increased the contrast and sharpness and edge sharpness of the image and the hairs became more apparent. It appears to me, under high magnification, that is some kind of fiber, more than likely cotton. In his lab, Williams demonstrated for sightings how he believes the writing could have been created. The initial step was to shoot pulled cotton with a 4x5 camera using E6 film. The next step was to pre-expose the Polaroid film. I removed the cover sheet of the Polaroid pack and inserted the transparency with the text on it. Using a flash pack, I exposed the Polaroid with the text. I removed the transparency, I reinserted the cover sheet, and loaded the film normally. Although Williams did create writing similar to that of the alleged ghostwriter, his elaborate process took over an hour to complete. It would be difficult to recreate the same process in the house with observers. It looks like cotton, but then again. Experts at the Polaroid Corporation in Waltham, Massachusetts, were at a loss to explain the ghostwriting phenomenon. I spoke with photo expert Howard Warzel. We have never encountered it, and we've been selling film for now 50 years. Um, to billions of customers, especially film that was even higher sensitivity than the uh, current color film. Uh, it could be what they're saying that it is. Uh, it's a possibility that somehow there's a, a field that they are capturing. Physically, I don't know how they could do that. The two individuals who brought the story to our attention say they didn't manipulate the film. The sightings people who have been there on site and watched what's happened say that they didn't manipulate the film. Does that put your skepticism at rest? It depends on if the, where the film pack came from that was loaded into the camera. If the film ca pack came out of a sealed box that, from Polaroid uh, that had not had the seal broken, then the answer is yes, that would eliminate my skepticism. That looks like a fresh we looks screened like a, a tape package. of the continuous action sequence inside the house, and Howard Warzel saw factory sealed film inserted in the cameras. They're very accomplished if it's a hoax. If it's real, it's, uh, it's something I've never seen before. Just on a personal level, isn't there part of you that would really like there to be something unusual going on here? Well, oh, of course. I mean, it's a, that's the desire to find spirits or design things that we haven't been able to find. Uh, it would be a, uncovering a whole new world to people if it were real. No way any of us can really know, I guess. This sort of has validated some of my beliefs that there is something on the other side, I guess is how you could say it. For parapsychologist Carrie Gaynor, the investigation will continue. The potential here is really unlimited. If, if, if they can write on Polaroid film while it's inside a camera, uh, what else can they do? I mean, what next? The, it's really, it reaches to the outer limits of our imagination. Joining us now is Kerry Gaynor with the outcome of his investigation. Kerry, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Is this case in any way like other cases that you've investigated? I personally have never come across anything like this in the 20 years that I've been doing research, and I'm quite familiar with the literature, and I've never seen anything like this in the literature either. Where does the investigation go from here? What more do you need to know to draw some conclusions? Well, what I would like to do is to continue to go back there and try to photograph this writing again and see if I can get it out of my camera with my film to make sure there's been no manipulation on the part of the people in the home. Is this in some way more persuasive or more puzzling for you than past so-called ghost phenomena with cameras? Well, it's very exciting because I was there when the pictures were taken and the writing came out, but because it's Polaroid film, it's very difficult to analyze it properly. There's no negative to study. Um, it would be very interesting to, to get this kind of writing on film with a negative. If it's not a hoax, what does it mean? Well, there are two possibilities if it's not a hoax. One is that this is mind-to-film communication, mm -hmm. so that it's some kind of psychokinetic process. Their mind is impacting the film itself. The other possibility is that it's some kind of spirit communication, and, and, and that, of course, is a more interesting possibility, but both of them are very exciting to me.
Carrie, did the, did the ghost writing change in any significant way over time? Well, luckily they had dated their pictures and when we laid them in chronological order, we could see a, a fairly definite pattern of some kind of growth or learning. The writing, the handwriting itself seemed to improve in some way, which I found very interesting. Kerry Gaynor, thanks for your investigative work in this Thank case. You. When we return, a different kind of investigation when paranormal investigator Peter James records his psychic impressions at the Ghost Rider House. Simple explanation.